There's an outpouring of abundance, of abundance, new doors have been opened, the land, it is green, a new grace has been released, the glory, the glory of The blessing is here. It's all here. Lift up your hands, come on. The glory of the ladder is greater than the former. The blessing is here. It's all here. All here. There's another flow. Welcome everyone. Good evening. So good to be here once again today. Um, thank you so much for staying with us from the beginning of this conference till this moment. It's actually the last day and I am so excited at what um, God has been doing in our midst. I want to um, say a big thank you to everyone that has been coming and I want to salute your commitment all right, and um, I know that we're not going to be the same after this conference. Thank you so much for keeping it real. Uh, I mean, it's been a mountain of transformation we have had. Um, this is the 13th session that we're having, and it has been so amazing. I mean, we have had light bulb moments, we have had aha moments, and you know, the Bible says that God sent a word to Jacob and it lighted upon Israel. And, you know, so it's not until you take a truckload of insights from this conference. You know, just one word might be what you need for this hour. And I'm so glad that for every one of us that has been participating and for those that would, um, watch the replay, we have had those words, you know, that will bring clarity to any area where we have been struggling with or having challenges. Say a big thank you to you all. Wonderful big thanks to our guest speakers as well. And most of all, I want to say thank you to God. So we're about to begin this session. All right. So after the session, we have one more session and that will be um, end. All right. So, so, so before we begin, I just want to say a word of prayer, like, you know, that's our custom. Father, we thank you for another opportunity that you have given us to gather here together again this evening. Lord, we have come to hear parenting knowledge inspired by you. We ask, oh God, that you will speak your word into our hearts in the name of Jesus. And as we receive this word, let it be profitable to us and to our families in the name of Jesus. We ask, Holy Spirit, that you take control of everything that happens here today. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Thank you so much. So our guest is here already. I'm just going to go ahead to, you know, put up his profile so that we can have him here with us. Selekuma Opofone, popularly known as Uncle Sele, is a values and character coach for children. He is also an associate lecturer with the Institute of Student Affairs Management, an institute for family protection, where he lectures on child development. His purpose and assignment is to build and frame the minds of the upcoming generation to make the right decisions based on values. He is the founder of an online school for values, character and child mentoring called Trees and Pillars. He runs courses like Introduction to Values and Character, Becoming, Boys Arena, Princesses Court, The You Program, Time Management for Children, The Value-Centric Child, Values and Decision. He is also a storyteller on his podcast called Bible Bedtime Stories for Children 
listened to in 68 countries worldwide. He has a song on YouTube called The Values Anthem. A to Z of Values, which was launched on the 27th of May 2021. He also wrote the I Am Special Code for Children Against Sexual Abuse. Every year, the Uncle Sela Foundation runs different intervention programs for children like Rebirth for Children in the Special Correctional Center for Boys and Girls, Christmas Memories for Less Privileged Children and Widows, Children's Day Party, Games and Conference. He served as a soldier in the Nigerian Army for 13 years and is currently part of the planning members of the World Values Day 2022. Selekumo Opofoni. Hmm. Wow. Yay. Sandra, good evening. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> good evening. So good to have you here. Good Thank you so much, Uncle Thank you so much. The Values Master. Thank you so much. The Values Master. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for being here. We appreciate, um, appreciate you for your time uh, that you're spending with us this evening. And I know that every parent on this call this evening is going to be impacted greatly. And for those that are going to watch the replay, I know that this is a moment of transfer, as you would always say. Uh, and so I'm just going to leave you in the studio so that uh, you can get to it. Thank you very much, Uncle Sele. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Okay, so let's let's do this. All right. Good evening, everybody. Um, today we're talking about raising children with strong moral values in today's world. Wow, raising children with strong moral values in today's world. The Bible says that, you know, you train a child in the way you should go, and when he's older, you will not depart from it. So in today's world, we, you know, we have, um, I broke down to three. So we have our home, we have the society, and we have the on online world. We have the online world. So it means that your child, your child or your children would, you know, of course, start from the home, they will get to the society, and of course, you have the online world, you know, or you know, times when they travel around the world uh, physically, or they're on their phones, on their tabs, you know, online. So, let's talk about the society first. Now, let's talk about the things that are happening in the society. Let's talk about the things, you know, that um, we see today in society. You see, I've been, I've been on a world, you know, on a value school tour, and... I found out a whole lot of things. On this school tour, I get to talk to children about values, but first we also talk about vices. We talk about, you know, the kind of negative things that we've been seeing and asking questions like why, and you know, if sometimes I ask questions like, you know, who knows what this word is when I write things like values. And most times they don't know, they've not heard about values before. And I'm wondering, wow, we live in a world where children don't even know about values. And guess what? Everything starts from the home. So it means that if children don't know about values, it is saying to me that parents either don't know about values or they know about values and they're not transferring values. And this is a big problem. Now, let me talk about the things that are happening in the society. Now, we have a society filled, filled with self-lovers now. You know, a lot of, a lot of, um, you have a lot of people who, you know, love themselves. They're self, self-centered, money lovers. You know, there's this greedy desire for wealth. You know, there was this time where, you know, you, you were just, you were just sharing that teenagers were doing a whole lot of, uh, you know, rituals. You know, Yahoo, you know, Yahoo, Yahoo, and things like that. Everybody wanted money. Everybody wanted money. Everybody desired money. Do you understand? So you see, you find out that you know we're having a whole lot of proud and arrogant children, very abusive, disobedient to, to their parents, you know, ungrateful, losing morals and conduct, haters of good, lovers of sensual pleasure. Now, my question is, my question is, 
if everything starts from the home, what are we passing at home? Now, I need us to ask ourselves this question. If everything starts from the home, because when you have children, of course, they are being, they are, you, 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 you nurture them, you grow them, you, you, know, you take care of them. If we're having this load of vices in the society, where are they coming from? Does he, is, is, he, is he saying that in our homes, we are having a whole lot of self-lovers as parents? Are we, are we saying that we're having a lot of self-centered parents? Because who you are is what you transfer to your children. You know, the Bible says that every, every, every tree we you know, will produce after his own kind. Same as us as, kids, as, as parents. We will produce after our own kind. It means that we will have children and we will transfer who we are to them who we are to them. So in growing children with strong moral values in today's world, the first thing you must do is you must understand the time and season. You must understand the time and season. As a parent, you must understand the time and season. Now, when time and season is explained, where there's a whole lot of vices going around, to mean that if your kids are not well trained, vices are like this. They're they 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 Arms are wide open, welcoming everyone who doesn't know what to do because they know what to do. You know, someone who is a self-lover knows that if I get another child who to be a self-lover, we're increasing our strength. So vices has, has strength. Do you understand? But you see the problem? We are not having parents who are transferring strong moral values. So this is it. Another thing that you must do is that after you understand the time and the season, understanding what the, what, the, what it's like in the society, you understand what the you know what the online world is like. How if it is not used well, it can corrupt your child. Then you must say to yourself, I have to be intentional about parenting. I have to be intentional about building or transferring values to my children. I have to be intentional. I have to be deliberate. It won't just fall on them. I have to be deliberate. I have to be intentional. So I wrote down something. I was studying one day and I came, I came across, you know, this parable of the sower. And guess what? I found out that we have four types of parents. Number one, we have the wayside parents. So I'm asking you this question so you begin to understand or begin to know who, where, you fall, where you find yourself. You have the wayside parent. If you know, if you notice, when the sower was going with the seeds, he 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 dropped some by the wayside. Some parents are like that. And when you leave your children by the wayside, you leave them for chickens. Chickens, those chickens are called or known as destroyers and devourers. I'm making you understand the time and the season. I'm making you understand that you have to be deliberate. If not, when you have your child, your child will get into the society and your child will make decisions. Values inform the kind of decisions your children will make. Values determine what is important to your child. As well, we have something called vices. Vices are immoral behavior. Those Vices also influence people. Vices influence children. So if you're a wayside parent, what you're doing is that you leave your children for chickens. You leave your children for chickens. You leave your children for devourers, for destroyers. When they see your kids, all they do is destroy them. They destroy them. The next kind of parents are the stony parents. Parents of the stone no knowledge of life. When life hits them, they crumble. So it means that as your kids grow up, grow up, you do not pass anything to them. No depth, no identity, lack of purpose, they are neglected, they dry up. Then we have the parents of thorns. Saying in like Game of Thrones. Thorns. Those ones that choke kids. Choke kids. They choke kids. Let me tell you a story, true life story. It happened today. I was talking to a boy, teenage boy, and I was asking him because his parents, his parents had complained about him. And I said, let me just have a talk with him because these days when parents talk about their kids and they are complaining, I am not too quick, you know, to begin to say a lot of things, you know, start to feel like I have all the solutions. 
what I do is that I try to listen to the child. And guess what? I looked at him and I, I said, talk to me. Tell me what is wrong. And he said something. My parents don't understand me. When I want to talk to them, they feel I have nothing to say. Ah, you feel your son has nothing to say. You're choking him. They feel I have nothing to say. When I walk, they walk behind me because they think I want to steal. So I said to myself, I will never tell them anything. Wow. As in, with your hands, you shut the mouth of your son. Ah, no. You shut the mouth of your son. You're choking. Your parents, you are, you, are, you, are, you are the parents of thorns, or you are the funny parents. You are choking your children. No. Then you have parents, you have the good soil parents. The good soil parents. Those parents, this is what they do. They build identity. They build children with roots. They water children, they nurture them. They train them. They make sure they grow and they make sure the children produce. They make sure they what? Produce. So now let me start quickly. Let's start talking about how to raise children with strong moral values in today's world. First, I have said that you must understand the time and season. Also, I have also said that you must be intentional. Then you must also understand the kind of parent you want to be. You must understand that in this, in this kind of parenting style that I'm using, am I growing my children right? You need to ask yourself questions. You need to know that this thing I am doing, will this child be able to perform? You know, will he be able to dominate? Will he be able to be fruitful in the world that we are in? You must know it. You must know those things. Then I move to the next one. There's something I call model. As parents, we are models. Your children will first see you. Do you have morals? Do you have moral values? Do you, what kind of parent are you? Every tree, you know, we produce after his own kind. What kind are you? Parents, parents are foundations. Parents are priests. Parents are pillars. Parents are scaffolds. You know what the scaffold is, you know, like you want, you want to, you know, you, as you're you are putting them, the child goes higher. The strength of the scaffold determines how high that child can climb. What kind of parents are you? How are you modeling to your children? What are you modeling to your children? If you tell lies to your kids, please, there's no need to bother Uncle Sele. Because the, as I'm telling your child, don't tell lies, it's not good. Your child is saying, but when I go home, my parents lie. So it means that you are already building advanced liars. You are building, you are building children that per second billion, they will lie to you. Because you are already teaching them that. So you can imagine the teenage boy I'm talking to, and I'm saying, tell me what's happening at home. And all he's saying is that my parents don't trust me. He did something wrong and I told him that, look, but you know that this one that you did was wrong. He admitted and he said yes. But he said, for most of the discussion, he told me that all they want to do is judge him. All they want to do is judge him. All they want to do is silence him. And he said to himself, I made up my mind. This boy is not 14. He's probably just 13. And he said, I will never. I said to myself, I will never tell my parents anything. So it means that your son is living in, in your house, but he is in another world because he is not relating with you. How then can you transfer morals to your son? No, what he's looking for is someone that can influence him positively outside because all you have done is shut him off. If you're not a good foundation, that son is already looking for a good foundation. And if he grows up without that, he becomes a problem to the society that is already waiting to turn, to turn your children, you know, to destroy your kids. Do you understand? Your children will first see you. 
Your children will first see you. Your children will first see you. They will first see you. They're not seeing any other person. Oh, they go out, they come back, they see you. That's why we also say that teachers should, teachers should also you know, have strong moral values because children are seeing them and they're learning from them. So the question is, again, who are you? What kind are you? What kind are you? Do you understand? You need to begin to ask yourself that kind of question. What kind of model are you? Because you are modeling and you are mentoring, even without talking. I always say that children are the best copycats ever. When they copy you, what do they copy? What do they copy? Do you carry your books and read? Do you teach them how to pray? If you're going to if you're going to transfer spirituality to your children, which is a value, you're going to, if you're going to transfer God first, it means that you are showing your children this is how we talk to God, this is how we talk to people, this is how we pray for people. This, it is simple. If you're a good model, your children will take after you. They begin to hear the kind of things you say no to and the kind of things you say yes to. My father will say no to this thing. Yesterday, my daughter did something that was hurtful to me. Guess what? She apologized to me. I would, I would, I would, talk, I would say what she did later. I'll say what she did later. Now, let's move on. The next one is instruct and teach. The Bible says, dear son, Listen to your father's instructions and your mother's teaching. It is grace. What are you instructing? What are you teaching? If there's an absence of that, let me tell you something. When God was in the Garden of Eden with Adam and Eve, that's what he was doing. He was instructing them. He was teaching them. Hey, uh, Uncle Adam, see this tree. Don't eat out of it. See this one. Flex. See all these things, name them. Do you understand? She was telling him what to do. What are you telling your children to do? What are you telling them not to do? What are you saying to them? How are you testing them? God will go. He will leave them. Flex. Let me see. Let's see what you're doing. Do you understand? Instructions and teachings. Instructions and teachings. Instructions and teachings. Instructions and teachings, you must give them. You must teach. I always say that there are seven transfers you must give to your children. There are seven transfers. The first one is the God transfer. The first one is the God transfer. Everybody wants to serve something. Teach your children to serve God. The second one, you must teach them the identity. That's you transfer. I call them also to tell them about you. So you must teach them about identity. If your son or daughter knows who he is or who she is, she or she, he or she will know the right things to do. He will know the kind of things that I shouldn't do or he shouldn't do. He will know. He will know that, ah, I shouldn't do this thing. Oh, I should do this thing. You transfer. You must teach values and character. You must transfer that, which is what we are talking about today. You must talk about values. Values determine what is important to us. Values are principles that guide our decisions, that guide our decisions. Do you understand? It, it, it determines your yes and your no. It determines the things that you, you will quickly do. So when they say, let's pray, you, I will quickly pray. I will quickly, I will quickly pray because it is part of my values. You must transfer things about, you know, about people. People relations transfer. You must transfer. You must also transfer entertainment and fun. Hey, my son and my daughter. Everybody likes to have fun, but this is how you should do your own. You are in the world. You are not of the world. If everybody is shaking, 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 bomb, bomb, and exposing themselves, no, that's not how you do yours. No, you don't do things like that. It is important that you do things like that. You must teach how to create wealth, wealth transfer, the value exchange and the wealth transfer. Those are things you must, you, must, you must transfer to your children. You must instruct and you must teach them on these things. 
if you do not teach, there is a certain person called the devourer. And all he does is steal, kill, and destroy. He is waiting to transfer his own. Oh, you're not the only one that is transferring, you know. You're not the only one that wants to transfer. God has influencers and the devil has influencers. What God wants is for the father and the mother to be the, to be the first and the best influencers in the lives of children. So my question to you is, are you a good influencer? Are you a good model? If you are not teaching, if you are not transferring, what are you then doing at home? What are you doing at home? What are you doing at home? If you do not have times where you want to relate to your children and understand the things that they, that they know, you must, you must talk about values. Oh, do you have family values? Do you have the things that are important to your family? Do you have the values that are important to your family? Respect is very important in my family. Respect is very important. God is very important in my family. We say God first anytime, any day. God first. We love education. So I always tell my, my daughters, regardless of anything you want to do, study. Study. You have to be bright, smart, intelligent, and responsible. Because that is, that is who God has made you to be. Do you understand? You must transfer. You must transfer. You must transfer. You must teach. You must instruct. You transfer. When, when, when you do that, what you do is you are giving grace to your children. Grace. Grace to your children. You must transfer. So let me tell you something that happened in my, in my, in my house yesterday. So I told, my, I told my daughters to, you know, um, to go and read. No, one of, no my, my first daughter came to me and said, my second daughter came to me and said, Daddy, I want, to, I want to reach for school. I said, okay, take your laptop and read. So after a while, I went into their room and I saw her watching something else. It was a cartoon. And I was like, why? Why are you watching cartoon when you said you want to watch, you want to watch your school videos? And she, she had her face down. So for me, two options, get angry, shout, or an opportunity for me to use my father's, my, the, the, father, the father in me to instruct, teach, and correct my daughter. So I told her, I said, look, if you want to watch cartoon, come to me and say, daddy, this is what I want to watch. And I say, oh, it's fine. Watch for 30 minutes, then you can, but you know that you need to read, so go and read. And then after that, you can read. Or you read first, then later you watch. But because you wanted to watch the cartoon, you came to me to say that, oh, I want to watch cartoon. I want to, watch, I want to read my books. And I said, okay, go, 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 go. That's nice because you know I love education. But you use that because you think I won't know. But you see, I'm your father. God shows me everything, so I will always know. So I made her understand that, that I always tell God that anything that is wrong in my house, please tell me. Anything that you feel that I need to, you know, anytime that my children are, you know, trying to stray away, please let me understand. So I had to teach her that. Now, I didn't try away, which is something we're going to talk about later. I didn't try away. But I brought her close, but I gave her the teaching that she desired. That was necessary. Guess what? We went out. And while we were coming back up, we were driving and I held her hand. And the first thing she said to me was, Daddy, I'm so sorry I lied to you. I will never do it again. I will never do it again. Now, for me, I felt very, very okay. I felt that, it, you know, I've been able to make my daughter understand something. I've been able to make her understand that she can come to me and tell me the truth. She can come to me and tell me this is what I want to do. So I want, to, I want you to understand that your children will not grow to be perfect. They have to be, you have to, you know, remove the weight. 
as you are, as you know, as you are growing, the weed that wants to grow with the with your children, you remove them. You remove them. The Bible says that while the owner slept, the den- the enemy came and implanted tars. As you are growing, remove the weed. Remove the weed. It is it is very important that you do that. Remove the weed. Remove it. Remove it. And it is when you it is when you understand when you observe your children when you teach when you see the things that they do then you begin to understand that okay as my daughter is growing older this thing has started affecting her i need to teach her something it's just that it's just like in child development we have stages of development different things have begin to happen to children at different ages oh as your children grow older they will need different kinds of teachings different kind of values at a certain stage, you would you you would have taught hygiene. At a certain stage, you will know that integrity is what you need to teach your child. If you do not know those values, how do you transfer the values? How do you transfer the values if you do not know the values? So that that I ask, who are you? Do you understand the values you need to transfer to your children at certain ages? There's, there's an ebook I have called the A to Z of values. There are 26 of them. Your child learns those values as he grow, as, as he or she grows older. I have something called the alphabet of decisions. Key decisions that your children will make. I have something called um, I have something called you know 26 parenting secrets. Those things are parent, those, those are necessary information that parents must have. If you do not grow, if you do not become better, you would not transfer better to your children because you are a kind. And as your children grow older, they become your kind. And guess what? You will transfer the things you know, and you will also transfer the things you do not know. Let me repeat myself. You will transfer the things you know. You will also transfer the things you don't know. Not knowing them is also transferable. So it means that you are transferring ignorance. And guess what? Ignorance is not an excuse. Ignorance is not a value. If your kids do not know about their body, for example, if your kids do not know that when, as they grow, as and, you know, in this world where we are having a lot of you know crazy people who like to abuse children, if your kids do not know about their body, and somebody tries to abuse them, what will happen? Now, there was a day that my daughter went out. She came back to the house and she was telling me that, Daddy, there's a boy you need to teach values. And I said, What happened? He said. She said, you need to teach in values. I said, what is going on? She was playing. And after a while, she said that a young boy told her that he likes her body. If I had not taught her about it, what would have happened? Yes. So once, once you are aware of the time and season, you do not teach in fear but you just transfer the necessary values. What you're doing is you are equipping your children with the necessary information to operate in the world when you are not there. When you are not there, when they're in school, what do they need to do? Have you transferred the value of knowledge, the value of learning? Have you transferred the value of contentment? Have you transferred the value of gratitude so that they can say thank you? So they can say thank you. The value of appreciation. So they can say thank you. Do you think it's important? Oh, yes, it is. Because people will want to give them things. And when they don't, when they don't, they don't say thank you. You know the way we Africans react to things like, things like that. Your children will learn from you. Are they contented? Those days, they will say, they will say ah, your child has long throat oh. You know, you just eat, eat, eat again. Do you understand? But if your child has content, is your child, your child is contented, he can say thank you very much. Your child, your child can say, you know, there was a day I was in, I was in a house with a visitor, and my, my children were always coming to interrupt me. And I told them to sit down. 
I need to teach you something now. And I said, when adults are speaking, you do not interrupt them. It is wrong. It is wrong. And, I, and they said, thank you, daddy. Thank you, daddy. So it means that when they see me next with adults, they remember the teaching. They, they know that they can play in their room, but before they sleep, they must leave their bed. They must clean their room. Because you are transferring, you know, cleanliness. What you transfer is what your children hold. What you don't, do not transfer, they do not hold it. I talked about the, this, this, the six transfers. I talked about the God transfer, talked about the, the identity transfer, talked about, you know, the wealth value exchange transfer. You talked about, um, talked about the entertainment transfer, talked about the people transfer. Now, guess what? Once you do not transfer about wealth, when you do not transfer the fact that you, you, you create value and you exchange value so that you make money, how does your child grow to operate in life when there's a time in his our life that he will need money? When he does not know, what do you think you will want to do? He will meet other friends and find out how are you guys making this money? Because I don't know, I don't know what you guys are doing, but I need this money. Options will come. Go to school, work, yahoo yahoo, make money, rituals, make money, beg and get money. How will he generate wealth? If you do not transfer the necessary values, your child will grow in that ignorance, operate in the society with that ignorance. Yes and yes. That is what will happen. So we must first know who we are. We must first build ourselves as parents, know what we ought to transfer to our children, then begin to transfer them with, in, you know, with intentionality. We must be deliberate. And we say to ourselves that as this child grows, I am growing a king, I am growing a queen. These are the values they will have. The Proverbs 31 woman, when the king was writing about, about the Proverbs 31 woman, you will see it is the thing that his mother taught him. His mother taught him that. His mother taught him all the things he was writing. Read the Proverbs 31. Read the Proverbs 31 very well. So when we have a society where people are running wild, is because in that home, values were not, were not taught. Even if the parents did not transfer the vices, they came out with the ignorance and their hearts were open and seeds were planted. Oh. And seeds were planted. And seeds were planted. And guess what? Seeds will always be planted. Seeds will always be planted. Seeds will always be planted. Sorry, guys. Seeds will always be planted. Now, the last thing I want to talk about, the last thing I want to talk about is while you are planting all the seeds, while you are building yourself, while you are nurturing your children, there is something called the Godhead parenting style that you must do to sustain, you know, everything that you have been doing. It's called the Godhead parenting style. Now, everybody remembers this thing we always say, the grace, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. So let me tell you how as parents, We'll use that to sustain the morals, the moral values that we are building our kids. Now, the first one is love, the love of the Father. Now, the love of the Father, that's Father God now. As parents, you must love your children. Do not leave your children in a state where even when they upset you, you don't love them anymore. Like the boy I talked about, 
like my daughter that I talked about. The boy has vowed never to open his mouth to tell his parents anything that's happening around him. So it means that the parents have thrown love away. They've thrown that love away, the love of the father. Now, when I say the love of the father, I'm not saying that the mothers don't love. I'm talking about the, the you know, um, excuse me, um, the Godhead parenting style. So we're talking about uh, Father God's love because we know that God loves us. So from parents, you must love your children. As you teach, as you instruct them, you must what? Love them. You must what? Love them. They will make mistakes as they are growing, as you are transferring the values. Some of them will, be, some of them will not be quick in getting the values you are transferring. It will take time. But as you transfer the values, as you have built yourself, you know first, as they are copying you, they will go outside. Some of them might learn something they're not supposed to learn. They might want to bring it in. Your reaction to the things you see matters a lot. That is where the grace comes in. You must not throw your children away. Because of the grace of Jesus, we can come boldly to see God's love. Let the grace also walk. Let your children also come boldly to you. So you see, like the boy who had desired not to tell his parents anything, if the grace was in place, the parents would have been able, would still be able to say, my son, come. I know that some things are happening in your life. Come and talk to me. Your children always want to talk to you. I will tell you for free. Your children want to learn from you. Your children want to talk to you. Your children want to hang out with you. They want to play with you. Do you understand? They always want to do things like that with you. My, the question is, when they offend you, do you throw all the values that you've been teaching? Because... I want to tell you something for free. Your children will not be perfect. Your children are not perfect. So as, you, as they grow older, as you teach them, as you instruct them, they might fall by the wayside. It is now left to you as the parent to make sure they do not run away from the love that will aid correction, that will aid teaching again. If you make your children afraid of you, you cannot transfer anything to them. You cannot teach them anything. Yes, that's the truth. They cannot learn anything from you. So one of the ways in growing children with strong moral values is when they have strong connection with their parents, strong connection with positive influencers. That is the last one, which is the fellowship or intimacy of the Holy Spirit. Now, your children, the Holy Spirit, just like the Holy Spirit is always wanting to, you know, the Holy Spirit wants to hang out with you. The Holy Spirit wants to gist with you. The Holy Spirit wants to tell you things. The Holy Spirit wants to, wants to correct you. That is what we also need to tell our children. We always also need to be able to correct them. So it means that by the time the grace is working and they come, you know, you're using the intimacy of the Holy Spirit, the fellowship. You're fellowshipping with your children, asking them questions. Hey, how was school today? I, I didn't understand this. Oh, really? The Holy Spirit is our helper. You're also, you're also a helper to your children. You're also a helper. You help them. You correct them. Do you understand? You strengthen them. That is where you give affirmations. You give them affirmations. I tell my children, you are bright, smart, intelligent, and responsible. Every child that I teach, you are bright, smart, intelligent, and responsible. We they make mistakes? Yes. But the grace make sure they, will make sure they come. We will make sure that ah, as they're as they coming, I'm loving them and I'm teaching them. I'm teaching them. I'm teaching them. I'm teaching them. Do you understand? There must be connection. There must be connection. There must be relationship. Do you understand? Will you strengthen your children? Yes. Will you strengthen your children? Yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. You will strengthen them. You will be their standby. The person they can run to when things happen, they should be able to come and meet you and tell you, Daddy, this thing happened. Mommy, this thing happened. It happened. Really? How come? This, this, this. 
Sit down and talk to them. Understand what is happening in school. Understand what is happening in church. Understand what is ha what's happening in their friend's house. Understand. When, once you understand, you can lead. You can, you can influence. You can transfer the values. You can transfer the necessary things. You can. You can transfer everything that you need once there is connection, once there is intimacy, once there is fellowship. That is why they always tell you that, oh, spend time with your children. Because by the time, you're, by the time you spend time with your children, guess what? Your children will begin to speak the things you have taught them. My father said I should always be like this. Okay, this is what I would do. My father always says this, 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 this. My father always says, my father says, my mother says, my mother loves me so much, I want to go home. You know, I always want to be at home with, with, my, with, my, with, my, with my parents. Let me tell you something. I was watching a movie about the young Philippine um, footballers who got stuck in a cave for 18 days. Now, amongst all the footballers, one boy did not follow them. Do you know why that boy did not follow them? That boy did not follow them because he kept on saying, my mother said I must come home immediately after practice. They said, no, you're a fake boy. Do this. Come, let's go. Come, let's go. Follow me. Let's do this. We'll just go and come back. No, 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 no. No, oh, no, guys, no. My mom said I should come home. My mom said I should come home. And he went home. Now, because he listened to his mother's teaching, he was able to tell everybody when they were looking for, the, for his friends that this is where they went to. What if everybody was in the cave, no one knew where they were? So you see that just listening to his mother, do you understand? Just listening to his mother, just listening to his mother, how many of our children listen to us enough? How many of our children have we connected to that, you know, they, 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 they rather just imbibe the values that we have transferred? How many? How many? How many? Once you love, once you transfer, once you allow the grace to make sure that the, the, the grace that even, even when they misbehave, you can still love them. Even when things have happened, even when, you know, it looks as if you know, they're doing their end, you can still draw them close. You can still connect with them. In spite of all these things, you make sure that the transfer of values is going on. You understand that your children, you understand that your children are kings and queens. So you ask yourself, how do I raise a king? How do I raise a queen? You know, I was, I was listening to one of my mentors who, who, when his son was going to school, he was telling his son that, son, as you're going to school, these things will happen. These things will happen. But I want to implore you, these are the kind of decisions that you should make. If you make this decision, this is what will happen to you. If you make this decision, this is what will happen to you. This is what will happen to you. You must be, understand the time and season and begin to tell your children, help them so that they will do the right things. If you do not tell them, if you leave them, because they will always leave you. They will always leave you. Just the way we left our parents' house to marry, they will leave you. They will leave you going to school. They will come back. They will leave you going to their friend's house. They will come back. And when they go there, they will always practice everything they've learned from the home. And that's when you now say, ah, no. Ah, Uncle Selah, not do well, though. This is your daughter. This thing that she did. Ah, no, 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 no. And you now begin to feel bad. Hi, this is my begin. Don't disgrace me. And the next thing you want to do is at home, kill. Did you teach your child the right thing to do? No. So when you are flogging your child, what are you flogging your child for? Do you understand? 
if you have not transferred the value, what are you flogging your child for? You have not transferred the necessary thing. Every time my children are going out, I tell them things. I said, look, you're going out. These are the things I've taught you. These are the things you should do. Don't do the things that you, you know, daddy, daddy will not be proud of, or you will not be proud of. If you know you will not be proud of these things, don't do it. I tell them to go. And I tell my friend, or I tell my, my sister or my brother, I say, please, please let me, let me know the things that my daughters have done, you know, while they're in your house, so that I know where, where I need to teach or where I need to instruct. It's very important because your children will go out. So in rounding up, let me go over the things I've said again. Now we live in a world filled with vices and those vices have open hands. And every time you have a child, what vices in the world is saying to you is that don't train your child with values, leave them for us so that we can multiply. But what we are saying, the message we are saying to you is that let values multiply. Let values multiply. How will values multiply? First, daddy and mommy, be aware of the time and season. Know who you are as a parent. Know the kind of things that you want to do, the kind of things you want to transfer to your children. Understand that if, if you're a parent and you do not transfer the right things, your children will not end up right, except by, by, by God's grace. And God is always gracious. Do you understand? So, also remember that you are a model and you are a mentor. Model the right values. Mentor your children right. Okay, remember that your children will see. Also instruct and teach. And don't forget the Godhead parenting style. Thank you very, very much. Thank you so much, Uncle Sele. Where is Uncle Sele? Uncle Sele, where are you? Thank you so much for that um, word. Um, I believe that the parents on this call can testify to the fact that, you know, this is the word for now. The theme of this conference is raising some children in today's world. And this is the word for now. Thank you so much, Uncle Sele. Um, Thank I think you so you, much. You, 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 took a, you took a peep into my notes. I think you took a <laughs> peep into my notes. <laughs> you took a peep. Oh, so really? how come, how come when, I was scheduling, when I was scheduling the speakers, how come I scheduled you to speak before me? Because I'm in. Oh, my We're God. We're talking about almost the same thing. <laughs> so, so can I say the spirit is one? Yeah, the spirit is yes. one. Trust me. Uncle Sele is one. my person. Yeah. Spirit is one. Yes, thank you so much, Uncle Sele. Do you have a question? Thank you so much. Does anyone have a question in the comments? Uh, so that Uncle Sele can respond before he leaves. Thank you so much. We enjoyed the session and you know you hit the nail on the head. I mean, <laughs> so many high points there and so many things to take away from the session. The truth is you cannot give what you don't have. If you are saying you want to raise a child with character, you want to build a child with character, then you have to exemplify it as well. You know, that um, upbringing, that character will not jump on the child like a piece of clothing you know so uh thank you so much uncle Sele. we appreciate thank you. you do we have any questions do we have questions in the comments so let me release you okay as parents be aware of the times and season yes we need to be aware of the times and seasons and you know uh parents some parents don't understand this uh they don't know that the times we are in is it's time where the enemy is actually working overtime. 
the enemy is working over time yeah. because he knows he knows what's up at this moment. Sadly, or let me not use the word sadly, a lot of parents are sleeping in quotes. I pray that yeah. you know, all of these things that we have heard this evening and you know, even the ones we'll be hearing in the next session and the ones we have heard since the beginning of this conference, I pray that we apply them you know according to our own reality because it's not just about learning it's not it's not just about listening it's about application of the things that we have learned thank you so much uncle sele we love and thank appreciate you. you god bless you Amen. and well done for the work you're doing thank you bye All for right. now bye bye, bye. thank you all right Thank you so much, parents, for staying with us. Um, that was a very um, enlightening session. I mean, it was direct and straight to the point. Uh, we see that really and truly, all the fingers are pointing back to us. All the fingers are pointing back to us when it comes to parenting. It's not really about the children. Once we are able to deal with the key areas in our lives, you know, our children don't have a problem. All right. Uh, thank you so much for staying with us. So um, we're having the last session for this conference at um, 7.30 p.m. And I will be speaking on how to raise godly children. I mean, what's a conference? All right. Okay. So I'm a Christian parenting coach. So what's a conference without talking about how to raise you know, godly children. So that's what we're going to be talking about. And you're going to be surprised that I said godly children doesn't mean I'm going to be talking about, you know, the Bible all through. So let's come back, all right, and um, learn together as we have been doing on this journey. And I pray that as you leave this mountain of transformation, you will begin to see the fruits and the rewards in your home, in the lives of your children, in the name of Jesus. I mean, what will it profit any parent if your child has everything, knows everything, learns everything, and loses his soul? That will not be our portion in Jesus' name. So please let's come back at 7.30 p.m. where we'll be having the final session of the conference. And uh, it's going to be an amazing time. Thank you so much. Please share this video. So many uh, powerful information here. Share the video and um, invite other parents, you know, to join us for the next session as well. Thank you so much. God bless you. It's bye for now. <laughs> There's an outpouring of abundance, of abundance, new doors have been opened, the land, it is green, a new grace has been released, the glory. The glory of the latter is greater than the former. The blessing is here. It's all here. Lift up your hands, come on. The glory of the latter is greater than the former. The blessing is here. It's all here. All here. There's another love.